Hi, I'm Kathy. Today we'll be practicing a sequence for menstruation. Let's get started. All right, in this class, I will be talking to you about different things that we can do when a woman is in her cycle. So the, the thing about the menstrual cycle um, is that there's a lot of different symptoms. There's symptoms and then there are disorders. So I will be covering in this class more of a broad scope. So there's tension, there's bloating, there's cramping, there's pain, there's lower back pain. There's many different areas of the body that are affected. So uh, we'll start with Tadasana and in Tadasana, just emphasize the work with the legs, the legs to open up through the pelvis, to bring that energy. So first, standing up <laughs> without tripping, <laughs> bring yourself to the wall and bring your feet together. So stand in Tadasana, spread the feet, lift the toes, lift the knees, move the thighs back, be right on the center of the heel, bringing that energy from the feet all the way up. So when we activate the legs, it also starts to bring blood flow and energy into the pelvis. So if we're just standing like this, then there's a dropping here and there's nothing that is opening or activating for the pelvic area, which is what we need during the menstrual cycle. Everything's taking place here and we want to energize the legs so that we can bring that energy up into the pelvis. Okay, so we'll first just start with bringing your arms up, thumbs to the wall, reach up with the arms. Keep that grounding through the feet, so establish through the balls of the feet. You can lift the toes again, lift the knees, draw the knees up high, up toward the pelvis, tailbone, middle buttocks in, and reach the arms up. So you're getting that extension and you're getting that lift. We oftentimes are sinking a lot, especially when we have heaviness here during our cycle, all right? So again, bring the arms up, press the feet down, reach up. Keep the back of the head right at the wall and feel your shoulders. Draw your shoulder blades down, draw the tops of the shoulders down, okay? And then bring the hands down. All right, so just establishing that aponic energy that moves up from the legs into the pelvis. And from there, we're gonna sit on the floor. So get a bolster. And you'll sit on the bolster and come into Baddha Konasana. So here in Baddha Konasana, you'll bend the knees, bring the feet together, and bring them in closer to the bolster. All right, so here again, we're getting that opening through the pelvic area. And one thing, with Urdhva Hastasana, with the arms up, we were able to lift up and lengthen here. So from here, bring your hands back, roll your shoulders back, and get that same lift through the side trunk, right up through your armpit area, drawing the shoulders down. Okay, so here I am in Baddha Konasana. I just wanna show you that you can use the strap underneath the feet and hold that strap and get a lift here. So the idea is you want to get a lift. All right, so what happens is we sink like this. We sit like this because we're used to sitting at desks and different, in different slouching positions. So here, you want to be on your front of your sitting bones. So you can move the sacrum in, the tailbone in, and holding onto the strap will help you do that. Okay, well, that will help you get a lift through the side trunk. What also will help you will to be on a little bit of support so that if you sit on something a little bit higher, especially if when you bring your feet together, your knees are high, then you need to take some support because this pressure goes to your lower back. All right, so taking that support, taking the flesh of the buttocks back, so you find your sitting bones. Feel the sitting bones. You have the back of the sitting bones, the middle, and the front. So sit on the front of the sitting bones. 
And again, you can take that strap underneath the feet, pull the strap up, and draw the sacrum in. As you do that, as this lower back comes in, then you can start to release the knees and thighs down a little bit more. Okay, so important to take that support so you're not rounding there, creating more pressure and more tension, which will then create more back pain, lifting up. So sitting in Baddha Kanasta, lift the armpit. So there's a coiling action here from the back armpit to the front armpit, lifting the chest, moving the shoulders back, Press the hands down behind you to get that lift. So you're lengthening up through the side trunk and you're creating space in the abdominal area, in the pelvic area. Okay, so now from here, I'll just show without the bolster. Some of you may be able to do without the bolster and maybe you don't have a bolster. You could use a folded towel or some blocks. You could sit on something that gives you a little bit of height, especially if your knees are raised up. So you can see my knees here. That's going to create tension in my lower back. So I want to have some height if I need that height. So now, if you don't need the height, come closer to the heels. And again, be right on the sitting bones and lift your lower back up. As you press the feet together, lengthen the inner legs and drawing back. So I'm sitting here with the long breath in, exhale, shoulders down. So with a calm breath, quiet breath. So again, you take what you need. If you need to sit on that bolster, then sit on the bolster. It will give you good support. Depending on your age and depending on the knees and the hips, you may need to take different support. So don't be shy, take that support if you need it. Okay, from here we'll go into Upavista Kanasana. And you can take your legs out to the side. And I like to line up my heels with the end of the mat so you can see that your legs are even. And again, so the inner thigh moving back, right on the sitting bones, and that puts me right on the front of the sitting bones so that I can lift my lower back and lengthen up through the middle and the upper back. Again, fingertips behind me. I can take that bolster, I can take something behind me if I need it, press the hands down and lift up through the chest. So here I'm getting that length again through the pelvis, the openness, and connecting with the legs. Like in Baddha Kanasana, pressing the feet together, connecting the thighs into the pelvis. Here with the feet active, drawing the thighs down, drawing the kneecaps up. I'm connecting the legs into the pelvis, which then helps to bring that flow into that area. Open the space, inhale. So there's many different <coughs> conditions that we have during our cycle. And one of them is fullness, heaviness, being bloated, constipation, cramps. So this is all addressing the pelvic area. So while you're in this position, just breathe, quiet breath. Keep the legs active so it connects with this aponic area. Press the hands down, lift the chest. Okay, from here you can come back to Baddha Kanasana. So when you come into this, you can also create more space behind the knee by lengthening the calf away. So there's more space behind the knee. Bring the feet in. Move the hips in. And use that bolster again. So if I'm not using the bolster, my tendency is going to be leaning back into my lower back. I want to create that verticality as I sit in Kanasta. So I'm pressing the hands down on the bolster. You can take blocks behind you, whatever you need. You can even have chair legs there and lift up. Okay, we're going to come into Upavista one more time. I'll just show you with the bolster. So sitting again in Upavista, drawing the knees, the toes back, 
drawing the kneecaps up, descend the thighs. So the thighs are heavy. And from there, you're lengthening up. Again, take a few nice deep breaths. So when we have our cycle, it affords us time to do a little bit more of a relaxed practice, restorative practice, which is good for everyone, not only women, but men as well. It can be done anytime. You don't need to be having, having your cycle. So just enjoy being and just breathing. A few more breaths. And then coming out. So we'll stand now, and you'll have, I'll use a chair for this, chair and a block. So you take your chair. We're gonna use the chair for the back leg. All right, and I'll use a block as well. So this is Ardha Chandrasana, so it's a standing pose. It's also helping to open this whole pelvic region. All right, but it's a standing pose. So again, we're activating the legs, we're drawing the legs up and using the strength of the legs and the action of the legs to open through the pelvic area. So now the right foot is pointing forward. I'm close to the wall so I can feel my hip at the wall. And then I'm gonna lift the leg and as I lift that leg, I wanna make sure the chair is somewhere where I can rest the foot on the chair. So you have support. So pressing the hand down, turn the chest. You can just keep your hand here on the hip temporarily, and then bring your, bring your buttock forward. So this thigh is externally rotating, the buttock is coming forward, and the whole pelvis is turning, the abdomen is turning. Using the bottom hand on the floor to get that support with the arms to turn the upper chest. And then you can keep the hand on the hip as long as you want. Bring the arm up. If you bring the arm up, take a few breaths there. Use that arm to help lift even higher. So depending on how you're feeling, what kind of energy you have, if you have a lot of fatigue, this will help you to stay in the pose a little bit longer. So you don't have to keep that leg lifted. The leg is on the chair. You can see the pelvis is opening. Keep the head so that you're not dropping the lower ear, but you're lifting the lower ear with that bottom hand, turn the chest. Just be there and breathe. Now you can stay in this as long as you want, as long as you feel that you have the energy, and then you'll come down. And then, of course, we'll do it on the other side. So you'll move the chair and move that out of the way. Take your block to the other side. Okay, so again, that foot is pointing forward. This is the external rotation on the front of that thigh. Just balance with that back foot. Position your hand under that on the block, and you want to have the hand and the arm underneath the shoulder. So when you lift up, find your chair, look back, just be on the side edge of the chair. Be close enough to the wall so you can feel the buttock. You want to move the buttock away. Move the buttock toward the heel. Make sure you have your balance. Press the bottom hand and turn the chest. Okay, so this bottom buttock needs to roll back. So this is that whole external rotation at the top of the thigh. The buttock needs to rotate back as well. You'll be able to feel that at the wall. So just establishing your balance, the support you have behind you, make sure that chair is helping you to keep that leg lifted, but not straining yourself. Okay, bottom hand underneath the shoulder. Bring that bottom shoulder blade in, turn the chest. Keeping the hand on the hip, turn a little bit more. And just allow that length to come and the broadness <coughs> across the, <coughs> the pelvic area. And then bring the arm up, looking up. 
Keep the legs active. Remember, from the feet, drawing the knees up, up through the thighs, tailbone into the body. Keeping that action through the legs to bring that openness to the pelvis. Taking a few breaths, slow breaths, relaxed breaths. As I said, you can have the hand on the hip, you can take the arm down, or you can bring the arm up. When you're ready to come out, looking down, bring your foot down, and then come up, and stand back in Tadasana at the wall. Okay, the next pose that we'll practice is Purvo Tanasana. So I have two chairs here. The chairs are facing one another, and I'll be going into the chair with my feet at the wall. One bolster here. You can have a blanket handy in case you need it. You can have it for your head. You may or may not need it. I'll show it without. All right, so you'll go into the chair and just measure your distance so that you can be toward the edge of your chair and the edge of your bolster. So your tailbone is moving down, and you're going to go down, but you'll straighten your legs. So you have to adjust your chair so that you'll be able to straighten the legs. I'm bringing the toes up on the wall and stretching the heels. So I can move this bolster a little bit, press my heels toward the wall, and lay back over the bolster. So now once I come onto that bolster, this is a, a little bit of a shorter bolster, I need a little bit more head support, okay? So I'll come down, adjust, bring that right up to the top of the shoulders, and then extend the legs. So have the heels on the floor, toes moving back. So again, the feet are active, the kneecaps are drawn up, the thighs are supported, the pelvis is supported, and the chest area. And then again, the head is supported. So oftentimes during the cycle, we feel very um, anxious or fatigued and we need a little bit of rest for the head. So here, the head is resting. It's a great way to release and relax, but still getting that opening and that space to the pelvic area so the blood flow and the energy can move through that area. You can bring your arms over your head holding onto the elbows. Keep the legs active. So there's a tendency in this because it's so relaxing to just let your legs go. So keep the thighs descending down toward the chair. You'll feel the back of the chair on the, on the thighs, on the back of the thigh. Pre keep pressing down into that. So the heads of the femur bone are descending and your connecting the legs into the pelvic region. Taking some breaths there. You can stay in this as long as you feel comfortable. So all of these, you can stay longer. So I'm, I'm showing you these different poses that you can do at any time during your cycle or at any other time. So later when you want to practice, you can stay a little bit longer long as you want or put some of these poses in between other poses you just need to have a rest and then we'll come out of that to come up lift your chest and then come up so when you're in this pose you want to make sure that the tailbone and the pelvis are descending so it's not lifting up the the support is on the lower back tailbone is lifting pelvic is turning, rotating, so the whole pelvic and lower back is on that bolster, okay? So to come out, come out of the chair. Okay, so the setup now will be for Vajrasana. Vajrasana will sit on the floor, and you'll sit on your fronts of your ankles, on the fronts of your feet, and sit right on your heels. Okay, so your thighs are parallel to one another. You would just bring your arms out, lift up. So again, getting that length, descending your heels, descending the hips, 
Take a nice deep breath, connecting the arms into the trunk. And then bring the hands down. So from Vajrasana, I want to separate my feet, come into Virasana. So I showed before making space in the back of the knee so you can lengthen the calf down and to the side and sit between your ankles. All right, so some of you can do this, some of you won't be able to do this. You might have tight ankles, you might need to have a rolled mat here, but you want to lift here and be right on your sitting bones, right on the backs of the thighs. So again, this is lifting up. So if you're getting this rounding, then you can take a bolster. Depending on the height you need, you can take a blanket. You can take a block. So it will depend on the condition of your knees as well. So if the knees are giving you pain, then sit up a little bit higher. Oftentimes in the cycle, you'll have um, leg pain, okay? So this is gonna help with the legs. So through the front of the feet, extending to show. You can always roll your mat and have the front of the ankles on the mat if you need a little bit more height for the fronts of the ankles. Some people are very stiff here, stiff in the front of the foot. So then you can sit back on that block and that will relieve the tension in the front of the ankles. Always the thighs are parallel, lifting here. So you can see when I sit on that height and the height from the, from the mat, I get a nice good lift here, okay? So we're going to lay back in Supta Virasana so just establishing Virasana first. Press the feet down, press the shins down, thighs are descending. Just bring your hands onto your thighs and lift up through the chest. Take a few breaths there. So when we're, during this time of the month, the abdomen feels quite heavy and, and maybe in sometimes painful. So it tends to move forward. So just be aware of that. And as you lengthen up, the abdomen will, will move back toward the spine. So that's what you want. You want the abdomen to move naturally back toward the spine. You don't want to create any tension or hardness or pull it back um, without just having that length. If you have the length, it will naturally go back. Okay, so now we'll go to Supta Virasana. And there's many different variations on how to get into this. I'm gonna show with the most height first and you can go down from there. Some of you will be able to get into it very quickly. Some of you will need to go into a little bit slower. So here, first I'll use blocks and then I'll use a bolster. I'll come to the front of that bolster and sit. Now, if you used a block before, you're going to need a block again or some support here, all right? So you would take that. I'm going to show without it. So I'm coming back down. I want this bolster to be supporting my lower back. As in the chair, when we come back, the tailbone is tilting down, the pelvis is tilting, and you're lengthening the thighs. So here, if you have tension in the thighs, this will help to eventually relax the thighs. In the beginning, it might be a little bit um, of a strain, but just stay with it and just breathe into it. Let the legs extend. Bring your arms over your head, interlace your fingers. And as you lengthen the side trunk, again, that tailbone is moving down toward the backs of your knees. Thighs are descending. Descend the thighs right at the head of the femur bone. And bring your arms up to come up. Use your hands, come with the chest first. Now, if that was relatively easy for you, you can just take your bolster away and you can stay on blocks. You could always use blocks. You could use blocks in this 
height, and you can use blocks at the lower height. Okay, so when you come down, again, come down onto your forearms, descend the tailbone, lengthen the front thighs, and have this block. You can lift your knees up just so you can bring your back down and see how far you can go. You know, everyone's practice is a little bit different, you have, and everyone's body is a bit different. And at this time of the month, it's even more different. Okay, so now tailbone down, buttocks down, pressing the thighs down. I have support for my head and support for my middle back. Okay, thighs are rolling in, broadening across the lower back, and then bring your arms up again and extend. So feeling that length come through the fronts of the thighs, extending them, <clears throat> moving the knees away. Feeling how that opens up this whole front growing area. We sit a lot and <clears throat> especially when we're fe feeling tired and fatigued, we sit even more. So this opens this space here to allow that blood flow to come. Staying there a few breaths. Just watch that your front ribs aren't moving up. I can feel the front ribs moving away from that block. Move your front ribs down so you feel the front ribs on that block. That's why it's good to use props because you can use the props to monitor what's happening in the body. And then release the hands. And then to come up. Come up again with the chest and then the head. So I'll just show you without the blocks, which for some of you, you'll be able to go into it right away. But of course, when we're having our cycle, it's better to be um, really a little bit nicer to yourself. Give yourself some extra props, cushions, blankets, so that you can relax. Because there's a lot of tension there and strain. So the purpose of your practice is to just allow yourself to be. So again, bring the knees up, getting a nice stretch on the fronts of the ankles, bring the thighs down, and then again, bring the, the middle rib cage down toward the floor. So depending on your body condition, you can use the prop that is going to best help you activate these areas, open these areas without creating any strain. Okay, so coming up again. And when you come up, just come onto your knees, bring your hands to the front of the mat. We'll go into downward dog. You'll extend your legs, press the hands into the floor, lengthen the arms, and move the thighs back. Just to stretch out the backs of the knees. So depending on how long you were in Supta Virasana, <clears throat> this is gonna feel really good to open the backs of the knees, draw the kneecap into the socket, and spread the inner and outer backs knees. Broaden the thigh. And then come down. So we'll do Adho Mukha Svanasana again. This time you'll do it at the wall. Take your hands on the blocks and bring your heels to the wall. You can walk your hands further forward. So having that support, lengthen the arms, move the heels back toward the wall Move the thighs back to extend through the side trunk. So here you're doing a forward bend, which is quieting for the mind, relaxing for the mind. Keep the shoulders lifting up. Taking a few breaths there. And then come down. Sit back in Vajrasana, sit on the heels, on the toes. Okay, so from Vajrasana, you'll get a bolster and bring the bolster 
down with a blanket toward the end. All right, this is going to be for your head, in case you need that. We'll sit on the front edge of the bolster, and we'll come into Baddha So you'll have your strap. Bring the strap around your waist, and then you'll bring this around your feet. So bringing the heels in, take the strap around the bottom of the foot, and have the buckle so that when you pull it towards you, it is going to be in the center, so it's not on the skin, not on your leg. And then before you pull it too tight, I want you to have it around your lower back, so it goes down in line with your hip bones. All right? You could even bring it down a little further because it will slide up. And then start to come back, holding that strap. Bring your hands onto the floor. Lift your hips, tuck the tailbone under, turn the pelvis, and then come right down in the center of that bolster. And then as you settle yourself, bring the blanket all the way up to the tops of the shoulders. The back of the head is lengthening, chest is lifting, chin is moving towards your chest. But the, most of the action is the chest lifting. So here the shoulders are rolling under, you're getting that broadness across the front of the chest. You relax the arms to the side. So in Supta Baddha Konasana, you can feel the whole pelvic area opening, but you can also feel the chest opening. So your breath is able to move easily in this relaxed position. So especially when you're tired, fatigued, or just beginning your day, this is a good way to reset yourself so that you just come to a position that's going to help you just relax, give you stability, bring your attention to your breath, just allow yourself to breathe. So this pose, Supta Baddha Konasana, is done a lot for a restorative series, so you can do this anytime. Before you begin your practice, at the end of your practice. Just making sure that the tailbone and the lower back is lengthened. That's why you have the strap here, to draw the buttock away, so the lower back is long. Otherwise, if the lower back is lifting up, you're going to have tension in your lower back. So you want to make that space long and then making sure you're right in the center of your bolster. And just relax, let go. One other thing, for the people that have some tension in their hips, it's a good idea to, to have some support there. So you can use a blanket. I'll just come up. You can stay where you are. You can use a blanket or you can use some blocks to support yourself. So as we're being good to ourselves, we can give ourselves that extra support so the thighs are resting. In case you have any tension in the groin or tension in the hips, it enables you to completely relax so that the breath can release. So I encourage you to take that extra support Try both ways, see the difference, notice what you feel. Always this is an experiment. Your body is your laboratory. So being curious, finding which setup is the best for you and using that. If you need to use two bolsters, you use two bolsters. If you need to use more support under the legs, you do that. So. Find out what's needed for you so that this whole area can relax. And then let your exhalation be longer. So you're releasing any tension, especially if you're having cramping. Just allowing that blood to flow, that energy to flow through that congestion that happens through the abdominal area.
So you can stay in this pose as long as you'd like. We'll come out now, so taking the blocks away. You can come up. You can either release the strap first or just come up, as I showed you, taking the strap away and bring the strap to the side. So we'll come to the wall, tilt the tailbone down so the lower back is lengthening. Bring your feet against the wall. So you can feel the action of the feet right up through the legs, connecting into the pelvis. So keeping the left foot on the wall, you'll bend the knee and we'll take the strap on the foot. So I have a shorter strap, but you can take the strap as long as you want, depending on your flexibility. So you're coming into this bent knee position, like so. Keep that foot pressing into the wall, descend the thigh, and then rest your thigh on that bolster and begin to straighten the leg. You can even rest your elbow, your arm on the bolster as you lengthen through the heel, draw the toes back. Keep the, the arm moving back into the shoulder. So you're not coming and shortening through the side waist, but you want to keep that or maintain that length through both sides to keep that openness through the trunk and the pelvis. So it's nice with the wall. You can feel that support, a little bit more containment there. The leg supported, the foot at the wall. Just allow yourself to breathe. bolster to the other side. Reconnect with the feet, the wall. Tuck the tailbone under. If you need to, come closer to the wall. If you've come away, keep that right foot at the wall. Bring your left foot up, getting that external rotation right at the top of the thigh. Buttock is moving down. Holding on to the strap, bring your thigh onto that bolster. As you maintain that downward action with your straight leg, press the foot into the wall, connect from the feet all the way back into the pelvis. Soft breath. So the no gripping, no hardness, but softness through the abdomen. Soft breath, and then exhale, release the leg to the side as you stretch the other arm away. Connecting both arms into the shoulder socket. You can rest that elbow on that bolster. Soft breath. And then bend that knee. Take the strap away. Come to Supta Tadasana. And then bend your knees and roll onto your right side. Okay. All right, so now I'm sitting in Virasana. Um, getting ready for forward virasana. So my knees are apart, just enough so that my trunk, side trunk, will be on my um, outer knees. And then for this cycle, I'm going to use the bolster, bring it right up to the abdomen to support the abdomen. So the abdomen's not hanging and feels completely contained so that it can move toward the lower back. And then I'll use the you can use another bolster here and bring it crosswise if you have another bolster, or just take your arms long. And then as you come down, keep the weight of the hips moving towards your heel. Let the abdomen rest on the bolster, and then you can bring the head down, extending the arms. Now, if you have another blanket, when the head is down, you can fold it 
so that the nose is not pressing into the bolster. I have a little bit of height, so my nose will be here, my forehead will be here. So again, as I move into it. So these things take a little bit of time just to find out what support is the best for you. Okay, so take your time after you've established it, you'll know. Bring your forehead onto that blanket, extend the arms. And then from here, just allow the lower back to widen. So we get a lot of tension in the lower back. Some people have lower back pain. So here the abdomen is doing what I mentioned earlier we want the abdomen to do. It's lengthening, but it's also moving towards your lower back. So it's supporting the lower back. Just use your breath and breathe into the lower back, the middle back, the upper back. Let the abdomen be relaxed and soft. And then fully descend the forehead onto that blanket. So oftentimes we get in the habit of lifting our head, which creates a lot of tension in our neck. So using those blocks, you can even turn the blocks a little bit higher if you need to so that there's no tension in the shoulders, there's no tension in the neck, no tension in the breath. Allowing yourself to be there. As you observe the breath, let the breath spread through the back ribs, front ribs, softening through the abdomen. So mostly in this practice, we're giving ourselves space, we're giving ourselves length, and softness to the breath. And then coming up. All right, so you could feel that across your lower back. You could feel the tension release there. So we'll do one more for the lower back pain. All right. All right, in the next pose I'll show you, we'll be using the chair to begin with, Varvajasana. So you'll sit in the chair, and you'll have the thigh to the outer ed edge of the chair. Bring your feet together, your knees together. So you want to keep the hips stable, all right? So we're going to be doing some twisting, which helps to release pain from the lower back. All right. Also, through the abdominal area, any kind of kind of congestion, uh, it brings more blood flow. So in this practice, you'll be using the chair. One hand is on the back of the chair. The other hand is pushing. So this is pulling. This is pushing. So before we're doing any twist, we just want to make sure we're on a stable seat. So you're finding your sitting bones, you're level on the sitting bones, and you're lengthening up. Like in Tadasana, we're again using the feet on the floor to connect and connect back through the femur bones into the hip socket. Inhale, lengthen up first. Exhale, turn. So depending on how you're feeling, just allow yourself to breathe softly into it, not doing too much. Depends on where you are in your cycle. Inhale, lengthen up. Exhale, turn. So you want to make sure the shoulders are moving down. So all the right alignment for Barbajasta in the chair, as you would on the floor. Inhaling. Exhaling, turning. So just looking at the knees, so this knee you could see was moving back, so this hip is tending to move back. So when you're coming into it, you don't have to be too, too precise with this because you're wanting to keep this area soft. But keep this, this leg lengthening forward as you turn, which will help to keep the pelvis more stable. So lengthening with this leg closest to the chair rail, inhale, exhale, turn. Okay, and then we'll come to the other side. 
So I'll show from the back. You can just swivel to your other side. One hand on the front, one hand on the back. Be on your sitting bones again. Inhale, lengthen up. Exhale, turn. Keep your elbows wide so the chest stays wide. So the breath will be able to move into the upper chest. So one thing about turning is you want to, the, the turning is mostly happening in the, in the chest, in the abdomen. The head is not turning until finally, until you've had that turning action through the body. So the head goes very last, starting to turn. And then release. So we'll do it a second time. We'll do it on the floor. And so you'll come onto your knees and you can have the bolster there or you can have a blanket. So I'll shift my legs over to the side and come down. So I'll just show from the back once. So you're on your knees, bring the legs to the side. This left leg is coming under, the right leg is coming on top and you're sitting down. So you can see here, this hip is very lifted. If you can adjust so that the hips are level, then you can stay in this position. If not, you'll take a bolster or a blanket or a block and bring it underneath that hip, okay? So I'll just come back to the side, take some support. Thighs are parallel to one another. So Barvajasana, it can be done on the floor, it can be done with a bolster, it can be done on the chair. Take your hand behind you and use the fingertips to keep that length through the side trunk. Bring your arm up, inhale, lift up, exhale, turn. So this is great when you're having some sort of back pain, tension, it helps to release that pain. Like we did on the chair, this front hand is pulling, so helping you lift up, but actually helping you turn from the back body. Exhale, turn. So the legs here are still active. The knees are pressing down, thighs are pressing down to keep that connection from the legs up into the pelvis, up into the chest, turning. And then we'll do the other side. So you come up onto the knees again, turn the feet. So toes are pointing toward the end of your mat. The other foot is over the arch of the bottom foot. And you're not sitting on that heel. So adjust the legs until you can release that outer buttock and then sit on that bolster. The foot is pressing into the arch. So this is a strong action downward. The hip is moving downward. Thighs are descending, and then catch the hand on the outer thigh. That will help you to get that turning action. Inhale, lift, exhale, turn. Keep the shoulder descending, so walk the hand down if you need to, so you don't keep the shoulder moving up. Inhale, lengthen, exhale, turn. So this is moving from the center to the side. and then release. Good. And then come to a seated position. Come into Sukhasana. Bring your bolster in front of you. And then extend out. Bring your head down. You can have that blanket for the, for the head. So this bolster can be used in a lot of different ways. In that Upavista, in this cross-legged position, in Baddha Kanasana, any one of them, you can take this bolster and come forward using the bolster right at the abdomen to support the abdomen and then bring your, your forehead onto that. Here you don't even need to have the blanket because I'm crossing the arms. 
So adjusting that and have your head rest. So again, here the lower back is spreading, widening. The head is relaxed. The abdomen is supported. You can just breathe there. There's a comfort in having the abdomen supported as it's, I can feel the bolster, which you can as well, feeling the abdomen move back. It starts to relax the tension there. Also relax and spreads the, the skin of the back body. And then come up, change the cross on the legs. Just the bolster, come forward. This is time just for you. So as thoughts come into your mind of what you should or could be doing, just bring your thoughts back to the breath. We'll go into Secha Bandha, Sarvangasana. So here, you'll use your bolster again. And bolster is a good investment. All right, so sit on that bolster. And now I'm going to take a strap. And I'm going to bring it around the feet. So in Secha Bandha, we oftentimes have our the final poses with the feet together. But here, while we're having this time of the month, we want to keep that openness through the legs, openness through the pelvis. You can take them even a little bit wider if you'd like. That will help to maintain the legs. So move your bolster back so that when you sit on it, your lower back, your hips are on that bolster and you come down with your head. So here, you're sliding off that bolster until your shoulders come onto the floor. With my knees bent, I'm pressing with the heels and moving the hips, but also moving the shoulders toward the floor. So I'm not coming way down. I'm sliding. As I slide, the skin of the back, the, the shoulder blades, everything is moving down toward the hips until my shoulders reach the floor and then straighten the legs, okay? As you bring your arms out to the side, let your shoulders descend down and descend the thighs, okay? So depending on your condition and how you're feeling, you may want to use some extra support, which I'll show. You can have your, uh, you can have a couple blocks or you can have another bolster here, just something to raise your legs up if that, opening was too much for you, okay? So coming down. Also, depending on your body, if you need to, if you're, if you're tight in the shoulders and the chest, you can always build up the, the floor for yourself as well so that your shoulders are then on something and, and now my head is on something. So before I showed when I brought the shoulders all the way down, if you're tight there, instead of coming all the way off that bolster, just build the floor up. Okay, so here you are with your legs open, arms out to the side, in a full open body position, but you're completely supported. The legs are no longer needing to be in a straight position, but keep the toes moving back towards you so it keeps the legs active with that energy moving into the 
pelvis area. Be right on the center of the back of the head. So as you're there, just observe your body and see how are you positioned? Do you need to adjust anything? Back of the head is lengthening. And then just be there. Depending on the size of your bolster, if when you're in this position, your arms are uncomfortable, if you feel any tension. So you'll know that just by being there for a while. You can take a blanket on both sides and bring the blanket underneath the arms to support your arms. So just be aware of what you're feeling. So I'll come down a little bit further. Shoulders on the floor. You can support the arms that way so that the arm can roll out. And ideally, I would have two blankets here. I'm just showing you if you do need to use that blanket. Otherwise, just bring your arms onto the floor. That descending action with gravity, with your shoulders and your arms, helps to open the chest a little bit more. Exhalation long. And then you can release the legs. And then you can bring the feet into Baddha Kanasta as well. So depending on how long your bolster is, you can bring your feet onto the edge of the bolster. Feet in Baddha Kanasta. When you're ready to come out, you bring your feet onto the floor and roll onto your right side. And then press yourself up. Okay, so now we'll get ready for Shavasana. Shavasana, you can bring your legs underneath the bolster. You'll come down, hips on the floor, and have a blanket for the head if you need one. If you want a little extra cushioning or your neck is being, head is being thrown back. If you have tight shoulders, your neck is tight and your chin is moving up, then take a little extra support. You can fold the blanket again if you need to. With your knees bent, release the hips down and then extend the legs out. So you're getting that openness and turning of the inner thighs out. Bring your shoulder blades flat on the floor and then just relax the arms. If you have another bolster, you can bring that bolster right across the abdomen so you have a little bit of sensation there, the abdomen moving down toward the floor. Something soft. Be aware of your body, where you can feel the heels touching, you can hear, feel the legs supported, your hips completely supported to relax the abdomen down towards your lower back. Feeling the arms, the shoulders descending down. the body released completely, surrendering any kind of need to move or do something. Let go of the doing. Just allow yourself to be here. Be with the body as it surrenders. Be with the breath as you release it. you with any thoughts that come into the mind and just let those go. 
fully letting go, allowing yourself to become quiet, softening, moving inward. When you're ready, you can bring your hands onto your abdomen, bend your knees. And you roll onto your side, bring the knees up, let your head rest on your arm. And then press yourself up. And come back into a seated position. Sit up tall. Take a few breaths there. Namaste.